Section 1 of Proverbs, which was written to a young man who would be king over the nation of Israel, portrays wisdom as a woman who publicly instructed the king and the children of Israel to receive the words of God. She was heard teaching her doctrine throughout the city of Jerusalem. Wisdom's words were opposed by false doctrine, represented by a woman known as a harlot. This strange woman, who was found on every street corner of the city, enticed the young king and the children of Israel to follow her and forsake wisdom. Each woman offered rewards to those who would follow her, but one was a counterfeit who lied about her rewards. The king and the children of Israel had to choose which woman they would follow, and their rewards were a matter of life and death. The Book of Proverbs Chapter 1 Proverbs 1 verses 1 to 33 The Proverbs of Solomon the son of David, king of Israel, two to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, three to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment and equity, four to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. Five a wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. Six to understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. Seven the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Eight my son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. 9. For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head, and chains about thy neck. 10. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. 11. If they say, Come with us, let us lay wait for blood, let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. 12. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave, and whole as those that go down into the pit. 13. We shall find all precious substance, we shall fill our houses with spoil. 14. Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. 15. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. 16. For their feet run to evil, and make haste to shed blood. 17. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. 18. And they lay wait for their own blood. They lurk privily for their own lives. 19. So are the ways of every one that is greedy of gain which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. Twenty wisdom creeth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. Twenty one she creeth in the chief place of concourse. In the openings of the gates, in the city she uttereth her words, saying, Twenty two, how long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge? Twenty three, turn you at my reproof, behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. 24. Because I have called, and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded. 25. But ye have set at not all my counsel, and would none of my reproof. 26. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. 27. When your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish cometh upon you, 28. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. 29. For that they hated knowledge, and did not choose the fear of the Lord. 30. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. 31. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way, and be filled with their own devices. 32. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. 33. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely, and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Opening Sentence The first complete sentence of the opening chapter of Proverbs lays out the primary theme of the book. Proverbs 1 verses 1 to 4 The Proverbs of Solomon the son of David, king of Israel, 2. To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, 3. To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity. 4. To give subtlety to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. While the purpose of the entire book of Proverbs is to help the young man achieve this lofty goal, the first nine chapters introduce the reader to wisdom, personified as a woman, who is the voice of instruction and knowledge. The young man must perceive, receive, and know wisdom intimately, like a wife, 
In the Bible, the phrase to know is used as a term for the intimacy that exists between a married man and woman. Proverbs is a very intimate book, peering into the inner man and exposing the contents of the heart. God alone, with the sword of his word and the candle of his spirit, knows the thoughts and intents of the heart of man. To know wisdom implies becoming one with the very words that proceed out of the mouth of God. The Proverbs and Their Interpretation Proverbs 1 verses 5 to 6 A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. 6 to understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. Dark sayings are parables according to the scriptural interpretation. Parables are designed to hide meaning, which is why they are called dark sayings. Psalm 49 verse 4 I will incline mine ear to a parable. I will open my dark saying upon the harp. When Jesus came in the flesh to the nation of Israel, he taught them in parables. Only the disciples who were nearest and most intimate with him could understand the parables because Jesus gave them the interpretation. Interpretations belong only to God. Men are never to interpret the scripture. God interprets proverbs and parables with his word. Finding the theme to know wisdom. Compare the first chapter of the book of Proverbs with the last chapter. The first chapter is written to impart wisdom to the young man, particularly a son who is to rule as king. The last chapter is a prophecy taught to the king by his mother. Proverbs 31 verse 1 The words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. The last chapter of Proverbs is a description of the virtuous woman who represents the city of New Jerusalem. She has been made perfect by the word of God, and she is now reigning in the earth and walking in God's perfect wisdom. The virtuous woman speaks the wisdom of God, which equates to God's law going forth from New Jerusalem. Proverbs 31.26 She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. Isaiah 2 verse 3 And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. The first chapter of Proverbs begins exactly as the last chapter ends, with the fear of the Lord. Proverbs 1 verse 7 The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Proverbs 31 verse 30 Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. In the first chapter of Proverbs, wisdom warns the son about the rewards of hating knowledge and refusing to fear of the Lord. Proverbs 1 verse 31 Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. In the last chapter of Proverbs, the virtuous woman receives her reward. Proverbs 31 verse 31 Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Identifying my son. Proverbs 1 verse 8 My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. 2 Timothy 3 verse 6 Therefore, God is the author of the book of Proverbs. The Holy Spirit inspired the writer of Proverbs to direct the Proverbs to my son. By comparing scripture with scripture, it is possible to determine exactly who is being addressed. The Holy Spirit may have inspired King David to address his young son, Solomon, who was appointed to be king after David's death. There is no indication that King Solomon is addressing his son, Rehoboam. Interestingly, the Lord told King David that he had chosen Solomon to be his son, 1 Chronicles 28 verse 6, so it is possible that God is addressing his son Solomon as the future king of Israel. However, it is more likely that the Holy Spirit is addressing the whole nation of Israel as my son. By the time Proverbs was written, God had called his son, Israel, out of Egypt, Exodus 4 verse 22, Hosea 11 verse 1, and made him into a great nation. God had already made a covenant with the nation of Israel and given them his law. My son, as used in Proverbs and elsewhere in the Old Testament, most often refers to God's nation of Israel. 
thy father and thy mother. The instruction of thy father and the law of thy mother are one and the same. Throughout the book of Proverbs, wisdom is depicted as a woman who fills many roles, thy mother, the wife of thy youth, thy sister, thy kinswoman, and the most excellent daughter. Throughout the Bible, God is known as the Father to all those who have trusted in Him. But He has a very particular relationship with the Son who is His heir. When wisdom is figuratively fulfilling the role of thy mother, she represents one who teaches the elementary principles of truth to the very young. The Apostle Peter gives insight into this. 1 Peter 2 verse 2 As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. The Apostle Paul was, in a figure, a nourishing mother to the Corinthians and Thessalonians, and by application to those living today in this dispensation of grace. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 2 I have fed you with milk. 1 Thessalonians 2 colon 7 But we were gentle among you, even as a nurse cherisheth her children. Nursing is how a mother feeds her very young child, adorned with the word of God. Proverbs 1 verse 9 For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head, and chains about thy neck. The intangibles of instruction and law are compared to the tangible adornments that represent their value. In scripture ornaments and chains represent wealth and authority. The word of God is the authority for all matters, and the blessing for those who keep God's word is spiritual riches. Genesis 41 verse 42 And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand, and put it upon Joseph's hand, and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen, and put a gold chain about his neck. Judges 8.26 And the weight of the golden earrings that he requested was a thousand and seven hundred shekels of gold, beside ornaments and collars, and purple raiment that was on the kings of Midian, and beside the chains that were about their camels' necks. And Daniel 5.29 Then commanded Belshazzar, and they clothed Daniel with, scarlet, and put a chain of gold about his neck, and made a proclamation concerning him, that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. Consent not to sinners. The instruction of thy father and the law of thy mother included a warning about sinners. Proverbs 1 verses 10 to 14 My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. 11 If they say, Come with us, let us lay wait for blood, let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. 12. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave, and whole as those that go down into the pit. 13. We shall find all precious substance, we shall fill our houses with spoil. 14. Cast in thy lot among us, let us all have one purse. Sinners desire to murder the innocent, and they are unified in their pursuit of riches. Sinners are found throughout the scriptures. They are called the children of disobedience, who follow the course of the world set by Satan, the prince of the power of the air. Ephesians 2 verse 2 For example, when Cain murdered his brother Abel, he was following the course set by Satan. Jude 11 It was Satan who conspired to murder Jesus, and it was the rulers of Israel that consented to do Satan's will. Matthew 21 verse 38 Luke 22 verse 3 It was the traitor Judas that kept the bag of money. John 12 verse 6, 13 29, just as Satan is known for his merchandising, Ezekiel 28 verse 16, the way of sinners, Proverbs 1 verse 15, my son, walk not thou in the way with them, refrain thy foot from their path, God warns his son not to consent to the enticing words of sinners, and then he warns him not to walk in the way with them, the book of Proverbs and the whole Bible, is about two contrasting ways. From Genesis to Revelation, and in everyday life, only one of two ways may be chosen, one, the W.I. of God, or two, the way of Satan. There is no middle ground. The repetitious use of the word way and path throughout the book of Proverbs emphasizes the choices to be made and the rewards to be received. As a consequence, look for these words in bold throughout this commentary. Deeds of the Sinners Sinners are known by the choices they make. They are hasty in their greedy efforts to make a gain, and they will murder to get what they want. However, they are unknowingly destroying themselves with their own wicked devices. Proverbs 1 verses 16 to 19 For their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. 
17 surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. 18 and they lay wait for their own blood. They lurk privily for their own lives. 19 so are the ways of every one that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. The way of wisdom. Wisdom is personified as a woman who calls out to the people of Israel as they come to the temple through the gates of the city of Jerusalem to worship God. Solomon built the temple of God on Mount Moriah in Jerusalem, 1 Kings 5 verse 5, 2 Chronicles 3 verse 1, and he also built the high places of idol worship on the hills of Jerusalem, 1 Kings 11 verses 7 to 8, 2 Kings 23 verse 13, Revelation 17 verse 9. Knowing wisdom's location sheds light on the first nine chapters of Proverbs. Proverbs 1 verses 20 to 21 Wisdom creeth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. 21 She creeth in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates. In the city she uttereth her words, saying, Notice that wisdom cries out publicly so that everyone may hear her. She does not lurk privily after the manner of sinners. Wisdom speaks with the authority of a mother to her children in her first recorded speech. Proverbs 1 verses 22 to 33 How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge? 23 Turn you at my reproof, behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you, I will make known my words unto you. 24 Because I have called, and ye refused, I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded. 25 But ye have set at not all my counsel, and would none of my reproof. 26 I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. 27 When your fear cometh is desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you. 28 Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. 29 For that they hated knowledge, and did not choose the fear of the Lord. 30 They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. 31 Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way, and be filled with their own devices. 32 For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. 33 But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely, and shall be quiet from fear of evil. By cross-referencing the words and phrases that wisdom speaks, her identity is made known. The following is a list of six cross-references for consideration. One in Proverbs 1 verse 23 wisdom says, One will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Isaiah 44 1-3 Thus saith the Lord, I will pour my spirit upon thy seed. Ezekiel 39 28-29 I have poured out my spirit upon the house of Israel, saith the Lord God. 2 Proverbs 1 verse 24 Because I have called, and ye refused, I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded. Isaiah 65 colon 2 I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people, which walketh in a way that was not good, after their own thoughts. Verse 8 Thus saith the Lord. Romans 10 21 But to Israel he saith, All day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. 3 Proverbs 1 verse 25 But ye have set at not all my counsel, and would none of my reproof. Luke 7 30 But the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves. For Proverbs 1 verse 26 I also will laugh at your calamity. Psalm 2 colon 4 He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. Psalm 37 colon 13 The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. 5 Proverbs 1 verse 28 Wisdom says that those who have rejected her will seek her early. Hosea 5 15 I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. In their affliction they will seek me early. 6 Proverbs 1 verse 33 But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely. Leviticus 25 colon 18 Wherefore ye shall do my statutes and keep my judgments and do them. And ye shall dwell in the land in safety. Jeremiah 32:36-37. Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, I will cause them to dwell safely. 
By comparing scripture with scripture, it becomes apparent that wisdom speaks the very words of God. Jesus Christ, who is called the wisdom of God, is also called the word of God. 1 Corinthians 1.24 But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God, and the wisdom of God. John 1 colon 1 In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Summary The theme of the first chapter of Proverbs is to know wisdom, which are the words spoken by God. Wisdom's words are contrasted with the words of sinners who entice God's Son to walk contrary to His Word. The subtheme of chapter 1 is the way of God versus the way of Satan. The Son must choose which way He will walk. The way of the sinner leads to destruction, but the way of wisdom leads to safety. In order for the son to know wisdom, he must hear and receive his father's words. Dispensational Consideration The nation of Israel had a covenant relationship with God, which included a willing agreement to obey God's law given to them by Moses. Obedience to the law would result in abundant physical blessings for the nation. However, if they refused to obey, God would curse them with a series of physical punishments. This chastisement was necessary to cause his son to repent and turn back to his law. The body of Christ, which is the church of the present dispensation of grace, is made up predominantly of Gentiles, who were never under the law and never had a covenant with God. The Apostle Paul was sent by God to the Gentiles with the gospel of the grace of God. Ephesians 3 verse 2 Those who have trusted in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ dwell safely inside the body of Christ, being sealed by the Holy Spirit. Members of the body of Christ cannot make God angry or give Him cause to mete out physical chastisement. Members of the body are already approved by God because they are accepted in His Son. Life Application The nation of Israel is being addressed in the book of Proverbs, but everyone can learn from this great book of wisdom. God wants everyone to know him, every young man and woman, every old man and woman, and every child. The wisdom of God can only be received by reading, understanding, and believing his words. Proverbs 2 verse 6 For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. In the next chapter of Proverbs, we will meet wisdom's enemy, the strange woman. Proverbs chapter 1 Homework Outline of the Book of Proverbs Chapters 1 to 9 To Know Wisdom Chapters 10 to 24 Tire Proverbs of Solomon and Their Interpretations Chapters 25 to 29 Additional Proverbs of Solomon Added 200 Years Later Chapters 30 to 31 Prophecies Regarding the Nation of Israel Concordance Search Find the Word Sinners How Many Times Is It Found? It is not a coincidence that the first time the word sinners is found is in the 13th chapter of the I3 verse of Genesis, which has 13 words. Genesis 13 verse 13 Been the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. 13 is the number of rebellion or separation. I would encourage you to study every occurrence of the word sinners to get a full understanding of the depth of the wickedness that is conveyed by this word. It is also good to remember that you and I were ungodly sinners before we trusted in Jesus' blood payment for our sins on the cross. Concordance Search Use Blue Letter Bible to find the word way. How many times is it found in the King James Bible? In which book of the Bible does the word way occur most frequently? Read Romans 1 verses 27 to 32 is a parallel passage to Proverbs 1 verses 16 to 19. Read this to understand that the judgment that sinners bring upon themselves is. What is the theme of Proverbs chapter 1? To know. What is the sub-theme? The undersmanders of God versus the undersmanders of Satan. Extras. It is recommended that the reader carefully consider all the words spoken by wisdom in verses 22-33. Search a concordance and cross-reference the words and phrases spoken by wisdom in order to compare scripture with scripture, to confirm her identity.